I'm Shelby Marshall, and I'm one of the hosts of Frank and Mary in Westboro. Normally, I'm joined by my co-host, Arthur Bergeron, but due to some technical difficulties, he's not joining us today. So we miss you, Arthur, and we hope that ultimately you'll watch the show and critique us. I'm very excited to have today's guest on, uh, Zachary Bogner. Uh, Zachary is uh, a new addition to the Westboro awesome team staff uh, team that we have here. Um, and he's going to tell us about his role, a little bit about kind of where he came from and, and the, the vision for economic development in Westboro. So Zach, welcome. Thank you, Shelby. I'm so excited uh, to be on Frank and Mary and uh, to be here and you know, to have an opportunity to kind of share with some of the viewers um, you know, what we do over here in the Community Development Department and at the, uh, the Economic Development Committee. So uh, Thank you and, and thank Arthur for, for having me. Absolutely. So Zach, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Our friends Frank and Mary want to know kind of uh, where you came from, um, and what's your professional background and, and what brought you to Westboro? Sure. Well, uh, every day at uh, you know about 7.15 in the morning, I, I come from Waltham. So I, uh, and I was originally from Waltham. So um, I, I grew up in the Waltham, Watertown area, um, ended up staying there. I, I went, moved to New York City for college and for a short time afterwards, um, I went to Columbia University where I uh, studied computer science um, and political science there. Um, and then uh, following college, I uh, was actually a management consultant um, for a company called uh, McKinsey & Company, um, which is a global kind of management consulting firm. And um, for some of the viewers who might not know, you know, the technical details of what that means, it's uh, essentially kind of like a doctor for businesses or public sector organizations or nonprofit organizations. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people also ask me usually, well, consulting and what? And, you know, a lot of that job is kind of like being a Swiss army knife and, you know, kind of being able to cut through tons of different types of problems and, and break down large complicated um, issues and, and try and come up with solutions for our clients. Um, in that role, I actually did a fair amount of public service work. Um, uh, specifically, I did about two projects on economic development, um, both at the state and federal level. Um, and then I did a couple projects supporting, um, you know, COVID-19 recovery there as well. Um, and so that was ultimately what kind of piqued my interest in the field of economic development is I had the chance to be um, an advisor, um, very high level kind of strategic thinking mm -hmm. without very much ownership over some of the programs and recommendations that I was making. And um, I also love Massachusetts. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm from this area. I love greater Boston. I, I love our, you know, communities and, um, you know, all the engagement that we get, you know, at the local level here. Mm -hmm. And so um, I thought it would be a better suited for me to try and, you know, do economic development full time. I found that I was happiest um, at McKinsey when I was on those types of projects and that I wanted the ownership and I wanted to kind of be somebody driving, you know, programs through to completion and um, you're getting to be able to see the impact um, that uh, you know I'm, I'm having on on a local Massachusetts community. Um, oh, that's, so that's a, a bit that's about a how very, I got. Here. Yeah, that's a very cool journey. Um, uh, going from being sort of the uh, recommending um, you know improvements or changes to being the person that can really drive the ship and and um, actually execute on them. So that's that's a really interesting background. Um, so. Low hanging fruit. Well, first of all, let's back up. Let's because Frank and Mary may not be familiar with. First of all, they maybe not even know that we have an economic development committee mm -hmm. and a coordinator. So tell us about what your role is here in Westboro. Totally. So why don't I start a little bit more broadly with the EDC? So the EDC stands for the Economic Development Committee, which is one of the reasons, quite frankly, why I really wanted to work in Westboro is because I learned about the EDC, its history, and um, you know how strong of an organization. Um, that it really is. And, and a, a local municipality having an organization like that is um, uh, rather unique. Um, and to have an asset like that um, was one of the greatest reasons why I wanted to come here and be a part of a community that prioritizes economic development the way that Westboro does. Um, the Economic Development Committee's role is to advise the Board of Selectmen on um, economic development related matters. Um, and then my role as the economic development coordinator kind of crosses about uh, what I would consider to be six uh, categories. So one is um, business recruitment and retention. Is uh, I spend a lot of my time trying to you know identify potential businesses to, to move to Westboro and you know try and make the pitch for Westboro to those businesses and bring them into our community. 
Um, I also work with a lot of our existing businesses in Westboro to try and, you know, gauge how they're feeling about their place in this community and, you know, figure out ways in which we can keep them here and make their lives easier as they're here. And so as part of that, um, I do a few other things. So um, I would consider myself an advocate for local business interests and concerns. When a business is struggling or um, a developer has an, an issue or a grievance, you know, I want to listen to them and I want to empathize with them and I want to brainstorm with them and with uh, the appropriate town staff and community leaders, how we can maybe try and remedy, um, you know, that issue or concern. Um, and in that role, I also kind of act as a, what I consider like a conduit or connector um, for business engagement. So if I don't have the answer, if I can't solve it for you and you're a business owner, um, I can connect you hopefully with the right, the appropriate staff who might be able to help advise you and provide more two cents than I can on that issue or organizations or um, you know, even other businesses and business networking um, uh, to, help, to help them kind of solve their, their issue as well. And then, you know, in that, you know, kind of business retention kind of space, you know, I also like to think of myself as a thought partner uh, for local businesses. So, you know, if you're a local business that, you know, has been, you know, struggling to revitalize, you know, your shopping plaza or something, you know, I'm happy to engage and have conversations about, you know, things that they can do or ways that the town might even be able to partner with them to help breathe some life into those areas and, you know, help, help them have more sales and, and hire and, and employ more people. Um, I also help the town and the EDC more broadly kind of think through economic development strategy. So a little bit similar to kind of the work that I was doing at McKinsey is, you know, strategically, where are we going? What's our vision and how are we going to get there? Um, and then lastly, my favorite part personally of the job is I like to call myself Westboro's number one hype man. And so uh, in, in that capacity, um, you know, I really try and make the case and, and pitch for Westboro to local businesses and to you know residents and to even the community at large to help us remember, hey, Westboro is a great place. It's an amazing place to locate your business. It's an amazing place to live. And it's got tons of access to all of you know, the wealth of resources and amenities in greater Boston and Eastern Massachusetts. And so you know, making that brand and, and uh, message clear to everyone and is um, another part of the job as well. Excellent. Wow. Great, great overview. Uh, you certainly have a broad uh, range of responsibilities, but um, really, I wear a couple different hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's what I would imagine. That's what makes it really uh, interesting and exciting uh, to come to work every day. Uh, yeah. So um, certainly our viewers would love to know um, kind of what's on the immediate horizon for Westboro. So there's always like a buzz about like, what's going in there, you know, when you see the brown paper go up maybe over, uh, you know, a window that someone's coming in. So is there anything you could share with Frank and Mary about new businesses coming to town um, that uh, they might be interested in? And if not, we can move on to the next question. No, totally. I can definitely mention one. And I think it's a really good success story for both the local business, um, the, the town of Westboro and the Commonwealth is, um, the, I believe it's 32 West Main Street, um, used to be an old subway that uh, closed down, I think, right before, potentially right after mm -hmm. the uh, emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we're actually really excited to welcome um, The Coop, which is a barbecue restaurant that currently has a location in Millbury, but is expanding and opening a second location um, right there at 32 West Main Street. And um, they actually were able, and my office helped them take advantage of some state and local programs to make that happen. Um, like, for example, um, they received a $10,000 award um, from the Economic Development Committee through its Business Assistance Grant Program. Um, so if you or any of your friends um, or neighbors are interested in opening a business or growing or expanding an existing business in Westboro, they're actually eligible um, for that grant and can apply. And it's very easy and it's a very, very low touch um, application that um, they can find on the EDC website or contact me to, uh, to get. And, and, you know, I'm happy to help help them work through that. But the coop actually won one of those from the EDC and then received a $10,000 matching tax credit from a program called the Massachusetts Vacant Storefronts Program. And so what that program does is it um, provides tax credits to businesses that move into properties that have been vacant for just over a year. Um, and so we're very excited to be welcoming the coop. I think it's going to be a great addition, um, super in line with the vision for downtown area that I think a lot of folks in this community have. And I love to see them being able to take advantage of our local and state um, 
grant programs. So yeah, that's great. Do we have an anticipated sort of uh, launch date for that business? Um, I believe they're aiming for something in the fall, um, but I, I can't say anything more specific than that, unfortunately. Sure. Yeah, well, some things have to be kept top secret. We were, we were oh, yeah. Here. You know, um, super classified over here at, uh, at the community development department. That's right. That's right. Well, and, and speaking of welcoming new businesses, there's a, um, uh, there's a meeting that you have that you open up to prospective businesses where they, you know, before they have to formally come before the planning board or um, zoning board or, or anything like that, um, tell us about that, that process and, and why it's important. Totally. So we're actually rebranding that meeting a little bit um, and we're calling it the business one stop Wednesday meetings. Um, and so you can reach out to my office again or refer somebody to reach out to me if you'd be interested in booking one. But the concept behind those meetings is to get everybody that you need in order to get sign off from the town um, for a permit or you know, to opening a new business um, in the same place. So that if you're a business owner or a developer and you're undertaking a project, it's a quick one-stop way to hear, okay, this is what I need from police, this is what I need from fire, this is what I need from Board of Health, this is what I need from the building, um, this is what I need for engineering, et cetera. And so those meetings um, usually occur at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays, um, right here at the Fourth Municipal Building in the Great Hall. Um, and so far, I think it's been a really great way um, for folks to come in and you know, walk out with kind of exactly everything they need to know in order to kind of start their business. Great. Um, and uh, we, Aiden, our technological wizard, will have um, Zach your information out of the ABCs uh, as a ticker tape if we haven't seen that already. So folks can contact you at any time with more questions, and I hope they do. Um, curious, um, what what sort of do you see as the low hanging fruit? What are the op immediate opportunities like? And when I say that, sort of six to twelve months, and mm -hmm. then the follow on question to that is long term. Uh, what have you heard from residents uh, and businesses that you know Westboro needs to do to really step up its game uh, as it relates to economic development? Totally. Um, uh, with respect to kind of those more near-term uh, type things, um, the first is that I think you know to start. I, I think Westboro is a great community and has a lot of the pieces that it needs in order to be incredibly successful in economic development that already exists in this community. There's a lot of great folks in this town, as I'm sure you. And a lot of the viewers know and are, are potentially their neighbors um, that are doing great work and doing great things and have a ton of energy to give back to this community. And so that's an amazing starting point. And again, one of the reasons why I think I really lucked out by coming to Westboro. Um, but the first kind of low hanging fruit, I think, is just making connections between those groups and coming up with some kind of structure um, to coordinate between all of these people doing great things. Because I think there's a lot of work going on and there's a lot of great stuff happening. I think there just needs to be more of a connection in order for there to be like the community cohesion that will really um, you know, kind of catapult Westboro to the forefront. Um, and so that's definitely one of those near-term goals that I think, um, I think we'll be going after. Um, another is the EDC's website and social media. Um, so uh, I'm not sure how many of the viewers know, my, my position had actually been dormant for, uh, I think, a little over a year, um, uh, in part due to the... Um, we waited for the best, Zach. That's why. <laughs> I'm lucky you guys waited for me. So uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy how things worked out. Um, but we're really looking to try and jumpstart and revitalize our social media presence and our web presence. And so I think that's something that you know, we're very much working on and trying to get, get wrapped up in the, as soon as possible. And I think that's something that will make a big difference for, um, for the town and, and the community at large. Um, another is the EDC grant program. I've already mentioned it um, a little bit, but you know, that's another thing where you know, in, the, in the pandemic, you know, a lot of people focused on, on a ton of other things. Like It's like, okay, if I'm trying to figure out how to survive, I'm not really looking to try and apply for grant programs to grow. And so now that hopefully things are reopening and businesses are starting to look at, you know, hmm, how can I change my business a little bit you know, kind of adapt to this new normal. I think the uh, EDC grant program is a great opportunity for businesses to um, apply and, and get some money uh, to make the changes that they need and want to, to grow their business. Um, so that I think is, and, and just processing more applications, getting more people to apply and, and being able to make more awards is I think a, a great near-term goal as well. And then uh, another one is um, our downtown beautification program. So that actually is so near-term that, um, our wonderful partners at the Garden Club have actually already put up um, the planters um, around the Rotary and around South Street and, and West Main Street. And so 
Um, that's a program that the EDC has collaborated with the Garden Club on for a number of years. And, um, you know, we're really happy to keep it going and, and even potentially continue to grow it. Uh, so that's a, a great near term goal as well. Um, yeah, so long term, you know, so the, all those are all great. I, I will add one, um, uh, actually, a question before you get to long term. So if a business set, you know, watches this or has heard about this economic development committee in your role, um, um, how would they, I, I think one of the, one of the issues I've found in the past has been that there is this disconnect, right? So lots of businesses in Westworld, small, medium, and huge. Um, what would be the advantage to a business reaching out to you? Like, what do they get for? Like, why should they know that? I think the first one is potentially free money. If you reach out to us, you know, and I understand that depending on the size of the business, like, you know, $5,000 or $10,000 might not mean the world. It might be a drop in the bucket, but if you're planning to do something anyway, um, or if you need to do something anyway, I think reaching out to my office, reaching out to the Economic Development Committee is a great way to just offset some of that cost. And especially at a time now, like um, as we're recovering from you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic effects, uh, I think you know, everybody is very cost sensitive and we can definitely help with, with that. That's one thing. I think another asset of reaching out to us is connections and business networking and, and community cohesion is um, you know, reach out to us. You might build networks and build connections that you, know, you might not otherwise have that will make a big difference for your business. Um, and so those are, and, and three is just ease of, um, uh, of operating is you know, being a friend of the town and you know, knowing in and out what the right policies and procedures and what permits you need and you know, what the re zoning requirements are of different you know, parts of town is it's gonna make your life easier. Just to have that relationship existing and you know to have a number to call on speed dial to be like hey hey zach hey fred hey jim what what is the acceptable use of this property and and you know just be able to have us give you a quick answer so i would but, say those three things are, are yeah. at the forefront of that well in a business owner myself you know we you don't you never want to be surprised like by you know not knowing something about fire code right or you know particularly i mean once you're an established business you pretty much know that stuff but Things come up. Um, I, I know here in our business, we've, we've got an issue and, and I had to reach out to DPW. And so because I have a relationship, you know, it, it makes it much easier to pick up the phone. They're like, oh yeah, okay. You know, we know where you live. We're familiar with your business. And, you know, here's how, you know, we, you know, we can kind of proceed from there. Um, so uh, I think those relationships are really important. And even just um, for you to have contact information for the businesses, we just had a senior parade as you're uh, aware to you know congratulate all the graduating seniors. But even for you to be able to reach out and send an email blast to a database of contacts, to be able to say, hey, we want to let you know if you're interested in having a sign, that's great. But even just impact on your business, right? That 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 helps both parties, right? So there can be some totally. traffic backup, all of that. So. It's, it's, and I think even more, there's, you know, there's, uh, there's programs and, and stuff out there that a lot of our businesses could benefit from that, yeah. you know, I'm sure they don't know about because it's, right. it's tough. I, there are programs that I learn about every day and it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I can't believe that nobody's talking about that. And yeah. what part of my job and the EDC's job is, is to kind of process those for you and to say, okay, we know kind of broadly what's out there. It's not your job to spend all day Googling to try and figure out what could be at your <laughs> fingertips. It's ours. And if you want to do something, you know, let us know what you're doing. We can potentially connect you to things that you don't know about that are going to help you. And, yeah. you know, we try and make people's lives easier that way too. So. Yeah. Excellent. So long-term for Westboro, um, what do you, what do you see? Like, you know, if you're like three years from now, what, mm. what, what are we, what's the strategy of the economic development committee and how do you help them get there? So I think, one of the major things that's been talked about, and so I'll try and separate this out into kind of two parts, is one is kind of the Economic Development Committee's goals more broadly and where it's going, and then kind of mine, my personally, personal goals as the EDC coordinator, is one, for the EDC, I think there are two main things where it's like two or three years from now, where are we going to stand, is one is I think, you know, it's been made loud and clear, not only in the EDC, but in the community more broadly, that people would like a more vibrant, more walkable, more lively uh, downtown area with you know fewer vacant storefronts and more activity uh, going on. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we also realized that, you know, it, that area has taken a hit from the COVID-19 pandemic and from, um, you know, fewer full parking lots in some of our office parks because of remote work. And so one of the big challenges of the next two to three years um, is going to be us trying to figure that problem out and try and come up with a roadmap for how we're going to reactivate that space. Um, and we are um, well on our way uh, to doing so with a program called the Local Rapid Recovery Planning Effort, um, LRRP for short. Um, and that's everything actually a state has an program. acronym, right? Oh, it, it, everything has an acronym. But you know, <laughs> if they didn't, I, I, I'd lose my mind. So, <laughs> or, or I'd lose my voice more realistically. <laughs> right. um, but uh, that's a program actually um, run by the state um, where we are partnering with a team of consultants to help us kind of come up with a near-term quick win strategy for the downtown area and actually develop some initiatives and programs that can you know, help jumpstart everything after um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and so some of the things that we're looking at um, as part of that, and these will definitely, I think, be programs and initiatives that have a multi-year time horizon, maybe with like a part phase A that happens mm -hmm. in the six to 12 month window and then a phase B that takes place in like a three-year time horizon. Um, but some of these things that we're looking at are activating public spaces. So, um, for example, sidewalk dining. It's my understanding that the town um, does not have a sidewalk dining policy as it currently stands. And so that's something we really like to create as more restaurants start to look at doing that long term and potentially permanently. Um, we're looking at, you know, ways to breathe life into the downtown area and make it more you know, community oriented, like by having things like public art installations or, mm -hmm. you know, parklets in alleyways. And so another element of that downtown, um, you know, revitalization project is also thinking at looking at, you know, ways to improve wayfinding. And uh, what that means for some of our viewers who might not know is just signage. And I think a great example of this is uh, um, parking. It is so uh, there's an off-sited parking study that um, it actually shows that we have plenty of parking in the downtown area. It's just a matter of it being in not intuitive places. And they're not being very many signs directing um, customers or workers to where that parking exists. And so one of the things that we're trying to explore is how we can you know, potentially solve that wayfinding problem. Um, and then thirdly, you know, as it relates to downtown, is just trying to find more ways to increase community cohesion and you know, have more community events and things that will bring people in to that area um, on a more consistent basis. Um, and then I think the other main thing when we talk about, you know, where will the EDC be in two to three years um, that we're looking at is um, the, the EDC's structure and procedures. Um, and so over the next year or so, um, and this isn't one of our like near term goals, something we're going to be looking at progressively over time is just thinking about the EDC structure and, you know, the membership makeup, like, is this the right mix of staff versus the right mix of, um, you know, community representatives on the EDC? Uh, is the um, EDC election cadence um, uh, like correct like, or, or right for what this committee needs and what this committee wants? Um, is the meeting structure and you know, things like the meeting time, is that right? And so these are all things that we're gonna be looking at too. And hopefully you know, a couple of years from now, um, you know, the EDC will be a lot more you know, sure of what it's like structure and, and, and procedures are. Um, and have that a little more codified. So that's something that we're, we're looking at as well. Great, that's excellent. So um, just as we sort of look at time, Arthur's usually here to keep us on track. Uh, we're <laughs> sort of wrapping up with our session, but I, I think, so Zach, you've made some great points. I think that the, um, the importance you know, for the taxpayers is that we have businesses and they offset or they contribute mightily to our tax rate. Right. So, or the, excuse me, they offset the tax rate. Right. So we want a healthy mix of businesses. Um, and there's, there is inevitably, um, regardless of where you live, but particularly as we talk about downtown um, revitalization, there is a healthy balance of you bring more businesses, you bring pedestrian traffic, there is going to be more traffic. And with that, you know, there, there can be created a natural tension, right? Like, oh, it was easy mm. to get through. And now like I got to, you know, make my way around all these people or signs and it's just different and changes can be, can be a challenge for some people. But I think the importance I, I always think is communication from the town uh, to the businesses and to the residents about what those changes are and, and sharing that information is really important. So I think you know, it's your social media work um, 
uh, uh, renews. Um, I think that that outreach to the community, uh, both business and residential, is really important. So totally. And to your point, uh, Shelby, I think uh, I want to make clear as well: none of these changes are going to happen, you know, without like a pilot. I think you know you're right. It's going to bring you know a lot of traffic, and it might change the community um, to some degree as well. And um, what we want to make my view on economic development and community development uh, more broadly is that, you know, it has to come and be spearheaded by, you know, the people who live here and, you know, the people who walk through the Rotary every day and the people who, you know, go to school here, you know, go to work here, go, you know, to the gym here, all those kinds of things. And so um, with each of these programs or any initiatives that we do, I would envision and hope that we start on kind of a small scale and test it out. And we say, hey, this is something that we're going to test for a week or a month and have a public feedback period. And if folks don't like it, then, you know, it's not something we're going to do. That's not um, the kind of community development that I believe in. So Right, right. Well, I think it's, it's very exciting. So exciting to have you on, Zach. Love the vision. Um, I, I will speak for Arthur and myself here that uh, we'd love to have you back on to give us an update about what's going on. Um, how are things progressing? Um, uh, new businesses that are coming to town and um, uh, we've got a number of projects going on over the community so I know that uh, social media is always a buzz of you know when when someone sees a, a bulldozer <laughs> clearing something it's you know people are speculating with good and uh, or accurate and inaccurate information so I think uh, you're going to be in a very visible spot you are um, and it's so great to have you on board. Well, thank you guys for having me. I, I really appreciate it. And I'd love to come back and, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully provide uh, plenty of uh, uplifting updates um, on where these things stand and on what businesses are coming to town. Because I think um, Westboro's outlook is good. So um, I'm sure we'll have plenty of great things to report on. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to Westboro TV, as always, for bringing our show to the community. Uh, we'll look forward to having Arthur back. And our guest next week is Alma Dimash, uh, our director of the Senior Center. So she'll be on to talk about the opening, uh, the reopening of that, um, uh, the center and all the programs that uh, they're bringing back. So until then, be well, be safe, uh, be happy, and um, take care.